Hey guys, John Kolb with Suffering Outdoors. On today's video, I'm going over the gear you need as a beginner to start hunting now. That's gonna include weapons, tree stands, accessories, and clothing. At the end of my video, I'm gonna go over one free tool that you can start using now as you begin hunting. My favorite weapon or weapon of choice is archery, specifically a compound bow. This is a Matthews Helium bow. It's lightweight, it's an older bow. I'm shooting a 70 pound draw length, but this is a very accurate bow. It's my favorite time of the year to be in the woods chasing white-tailed deer. Before you buy a compound bow, you need to know your draw length. You measure from the end of your wrist to the middle of your chest. I'm six foot tall and I have a 30 inch draw length. Each person's gonna be a little different. I actually bought this bow used on Craigslist from somebody for about $600. You can go to a bow shop, have them measure you, uh, you can test different weights, but compound bow, a lot of fun. This is gonna have a little bit of a learning curve compared to something like a um, crossbow, but it's a lot of fun once you learn how to shoot it, once you get used to the sights, and it's very rewarding to harvest a whitetail with a compound bow. I'm shooting a Carbon Express Maximum Red in the Badlands camo. I like the green fletchings and the camo looks really sweet, the camo pattern on it. And then I'm shooting two blade Rage Rodheads. I may, thick, I may switch to fixed blades eventually, but if you hit a deer right in the vitals, you're not in the shoulder with the expandable broadhead and you have some weight to your arrow, you're not shooting a really light arrow, have a little bit of weight, have a good draw length, good weight on your bow. This is gonna put deer down and you will kill deer and a lot of deer with this setup. A great place to start archery hunting is with a crossbow. Uh, there's been some criticism of guys who use crossbows, but hey, if it's gonna get you into hunting and get you your first deer, go for it. You don't have to have that full draw cycle that you do with a compound. You pull the bow up, press the trigger and shoot. So it's gonna be slightly easier on that end without spooking the deer. It's also easier to learn how to shoot through a scope that's gonna feel more like a rifle than the traditional sights on a compound. And it's just a great way to get into more affordably archery, less of a learning curve, and then to kill your first deer. So for the first time this year, I started shooting a recurve bow. This is a Samic Galaxy, a very popular recurve bow. This is very affordable to start archery, but it's also going to be the most challenging weapon that you can start off with in archery. There's no sights on it. It's instinctive aiming. It takes a little bit to learn the form to shoot. And then also without the sights makes it a little bit more challenging. Your range is a lot more limited than with a compound or a crossbow. I've missed deer right around 20 yards. I'm pretty comfortable shooting at a target, but you also always kind of get that uh, in the moment buck deer fever when you're trying to shoot something. But this is the most affordable way to get into archery. You have to get traditional arrows with the fletchings. It's a beautiful bow, uh, very fun to use, very challenging, very rewarding, but gonna take a lot of time and effort to learn how to shoot it. So tree stands. I am primarily using a lone wolf climbing stand. Take the straps out, strap it around the tree, and you use both sections to climb up into the tree. I'm hunting mostly hardwood areas in northern Pennsylvania, so I have a lot of options to go up in with the climber stand. If you're in a softwood area or an area where uh, you don't have a lot of straight trees you can go up in, a lot of guys use hang-on stands. You attach the sticks. It's going to be more gear you got to buy, but you attach the sticks on the tree. Then you climb up the sticks, attach the hang-on stand. Um, the most basic tree stand that you can get into is a ladder stand. You're just going to set it up on the tree and hunt in that fixed location. I love using a climber stand be because I can be mobile. If there's an area where the deer are not moving through that they were in years past, and I find that it's not a good spot this year, I can change my location very easily. Sometimes even in the same day, I can climb down the tree, uh, move 100 yards over, 300 yards over, go to a different area to where you're gonna be more limited with a ladder stand. Same with the 
with a hang on stand, gonna take a little bit more time, but you can be mobile and you can move around and set up in different areas. Another really popular option is hunting out of a ground blind. Uh, they're relatively affordable. You don't have to worry about getting up in a tree. Your sight or your, your line of view is gonna be a little bit more limited, especially if you're hunting in an overgrown area or an area with lots of cover. But a very good option is to start out with a ground blind, especially if you're uncomfortable with heights or you've never hunted from an elevated location. Which brings me to your tree stand should always come with a safety harness. If it does not, you have to wear one for yourself, for your family. Uh, generally, the ones that come with the tree stand are extremely uncomfortable. You can buy a relatively cheap one online. This particular one is a lot more comfortable. You just strap it on and then it buckles in the front. And then it has leg loops that go underneath and buckle on. And then you have your tether rope that you attach to the tree. Again, the most important thing when you're hunting is to be safe. Highly recommend a safety harness. They're very affordable. Again, a lot of times they come with a, uh, with a cheap one that's not very comfortable with the tree stand. If you don't like it, invest in a more comfortable one. You do not have to buy a tree stand to start hunting. There's very successful hunters that hunt from the ground with compounds, with archery equipment, with rifles. Some of the advantages to getting up into the tree, A, you get your scent off the ground so deer can come by through uh, without smelling you, so that's one of the advantages. B, it gets you out of the deer sight line, so if they're walking through and you move a little bit, if you're high enough, you can stay out of their scent line. And third, it allows you to see better. If you're hunting from the ground in a thick overgrown area, it can be really difficult to see deer unless they're right in front of you which makes it a lot more complicated to either get your rifle on it or your bow. Uh, so tree stand, highly recommended, but don't feel like you have to drop money to start hunting. You can start right away from the ground and then upgrade later. So next on the list is accessories. First is a backpack. You can go cheap, you can go expensive. This one's more on the affordable side. Great for organizing and holding all your gear. First on the list, is a bow rope hunting out of a tree stand. Attach this to yourself or your stand. Attach it to your bow at the bottom of the ground. Climb up the tree stand, pull your bow up, help stay safe. Hunting archery, sometimes even rifle. You always need a good reliable range finder to be able to know what distance you're shooting. If you're allowed to use in a screw and bow holder or gun holder, just a cheap bow, put it in the tree Screw it around, hang your bows or your rifle so you're not holding it your whole set. Call me a wimp or a pansy, but I do like using gutting gloves. I hate the smell on your hands or getting it all over you, and it's not really sanitary. So cheap dollar, five, whatever, six dollars, gutting gloves. I started using a tow rope to get deer out, especially if it's a doe wrap it around its neck, get its legs in underneath the, uh, the loop, and then you can drag it out a lot easier. If you're hunting in a cold weather state or an area that gets cold, hot hands are awesome. I always have a grunt call when I'm archery hunting. I don't use it proactively to, to bring in deer, but if I see a buck that's going by and I know it's not gonna come to me, I'll pull the grunt out and give it a few grunts. Hopefully you need this. This is my gutting knife. You should always gut your animal after you kill it. It helps get the, uh, the body core temperature down right away and you don't want those guts in there rotting and decaying. So gut your animal as soon as you can. Get the body to cool down. I have my license holder tag that I usually put on my backpack or if I'm not taking my backpack, I can take it off, put it on my back. I usually put a pen in there to fill out my deer tag. And I really like using zip ties. If you're allowed to put the tag on the antler of your buck, zip tie the tag down. Or in Pennsylvania, we actually have to put it in the ear. So you poke a little hole in the ear, put the zip tag through, tighten the license down tight so it doesn't fall off or get lost. 
You don't need this to start hunting, but it is an incredible tool, very affordable, and that is a trail camera. Get this set up early season or before the season starts, SD card in there, and you can start monitoring and scouting for animals to see when they're using your property or when they're using uh, public ground or wherever you're hunting. You get invaluable information of what time deer are coming through, what deer are there, uh, so I would never go without using a trail camera. So another item on my list is a good headlamp. Whether you're walking in in the morning or at night, it's really nice to have just hit a button and have a flashlight shining wherever you look. I like to have mine on a lower setting to where it's not super bright. Um, there's some debate whether or not deer can see it. I'd rather not risk it. So I have just enough so I can see around my feet. So don't forget your headlight like I did here. My final piece of gear that I use and that I highly recommend is Onyx Hunt. It's a app that you download on either your iPhone or your Android. Very affordable compared to buying a GPS. This can turn your phone into a high functioning GPS system, which will help you navigate. It's gonna help you scout and keep you from getting lost in the woods. So clothing is a very important part of your gear. It helps you stay warm, helps you stay comfortable. Camouflage will help you stay unseen by deer. You do not need expensive camo. You do not need expensive scent blocking technology. You don't need the highest designer end pants or coat. Uh, there may be some benefits to those, but when you're just starting out, I'd say go cheap, buy something that's gonna be comfortable, that's gonna fit well, fit tight, and gonna help keep you warm and unseen by animals. You do not need to buy camo. There are guys that get it done specifically in rifle. Uh, without any camo. So when you're hunting, if you're in a cold weather state, you'd be surprised at how quickly you get cold when you're not moving. If you're sitting there for a couple hours, even at 30 degrees, it can, it can feel really cold. So I start with a really good base layer. It's merino wool. There's two things I love about it. One, it's extremely warm and compact. Two, it has incredible odor resistant properties. You can sweat in this thing, stink it up, hang it up to dry and it smells like you just washed it. I have both the shirt and the pants as my base layer. I always wear a camo hoodie. Usually if it's uh, warm out, I'll just wear this and not a jacket. And then I have just a lightweight, cheap pair of camo pants. If it's really cold, I'll do the merino wool, wool base layer, a pair of sweatpants, and then these. And then thirdly, insulated pants that are both waterproof. This is a Cabela's product. This is the, the True Timber Strata. And then I also have a Parka from Cabela's Bass Pro. This has two layers where you can actually zip it off. If it's warmer out, you can just use the outside jacket to stay warm uh, and it's water resistant. And then you have the heavier duty insert. I always have a camo beanie if I'm archery hunting or lightweight camo gloves. I really love, and I'm probably gonna say this wrong, but a balaclava. This is a merino wool, lightweight, but you slip this over your head, keeps you warm, keeps the wind off your face. So I absolutely love that. Again, back to the merino wool. I use nice, thick, heavy merino wool socks. You're better off using just a thicker one pair of socks than using two or three pairs because they'll start cutting your, your, cutting your circulation off. These are Irish setter. Uh, muck boot has kind of taken over the term. They're just a, a rubber boot. Um, I like wearing these because you can cross streams. They're easy to slip on and off. They're comfortable to hike in. And the rubber boot's supposed to not leave as much scent as like a leather boot when you're walking in. Deer can generally still smell your scent track, but it's better than uh, leather boots.